This is where responsive design in Muse is going to get exciting. So we've talked about the breakpoints bar and how to add new breakpoints. But what do you do with your content at those different breakpoints? Well, let me show you. The example we have on screen has three photos on it. They're in the three columns that we've defined. So let's grab the scrubber on the side and begin to drag it down to simulate responsiveness. Now, let's say when we get to about 650 pixels, somewhere around there, we feel like the images are looking a little bit small. Notice you can't edit them without actually creating a breakpoint there. So let's create a new breakpoint. And then you can just drag and shuffle these images around however you want. So let me just bring these down and let's say we'll go with kind of a two column layout. Now the nice thing about different breakpoints is we could actually go into the breakpoint properties here and just define this as two columns only. There. So now we can use those new columns as guides. So let's drag that one there. Let's put this image up here and do the same thing. Okay. And with this last one, because it's obviously alone in a column, let's make it much bigger like that. Okay. So this might simulate more of a tablet size layout. So watch what happens. I'm going to jump to the 960 breakpoint, which was our original. So now if I grab the scrubber at the 960 breakpoint and I scale it down, once it hits that breakpoint we've added at 650, the entire site shuffles and all of the content is now at the new size. So the thing to remember here is that these are the same elements as they are on the 960 breakpoint. If you delete one of these elements, it's gone from the other breakpoint too. And we'll talk about this later in our golden rules section. But let's keep scaling this down until it gets too small. So let's say that's about a phone size right there. I don't like how small these images are, so I'm going to do the same thing. Add a new breakpoint. And now on this breakpoint, I'm actually going to change the breakpoint properties to be only one column. There. And click OK. So now we'll go ahead and just resize these images to fit nicely in our single column. There's that one. And let me move this down so we have more space. Okay. And our last one. There you go. So I like using the column guides so that I have better alignment tools, but they're not essential. They don't actually impact the responsiveness. So there, now that these are all nicely aligned, we can look at the three different breakpoints. That's how it looks at 960. That's how it looks at 650. And that's how it looks at 390. So let's preview this page in the browser. So now that we're in the browser, let's begin scaling the browser down. Now, we're at a really wide width here, much wider than 960. So it's going to take a little while till it begins actually reshuffling. So let's scale it down, and there things are starting to shrink. And when we hit a breakpoint, boom, everything changes. So the layout is completely different, but the elements are the same. Now, if I keep scrolling down, we'd expect to hit that lower breakpoint. But watch what happens. I've actually capped out at the limit. Browsers can only go so narrow. So while that other breakpoint does exist, you can't actually see it by previewing it on a desktop browser. Now keep in mind as well that that breakpoint really is for a mobile device. So the best way to be looking at it is on a mobile device itself. Now there is a little trick to being able to preview below that lower breakpoint, and it's using something in the browser called developer tools. Most browsers come with them. So I'm using Chrome, and if I click the menu in Chrome and go down to More Tools and Developer Tools, we get this intimidating looking console on the side. But the great thing about this is you don't even need to pay attention to what's in the console. All I'm going to do is just drag the side of the console down. And this will actually let you go to the smallest breakpoint. So there, you can see that at a breakpoint of about 380 pixels or so. That's where our single column layout begins. The nice thing about using this to this developer tools is that it actually gives you pixel dimensions as you drag down. So if you're on a site on the web and you think this is a great responsive breakpoint or responsive technique, you can kind of inspect it using this tool and see where they've added those breakpoints in. But you don't actually need the developer tools. And if I went back to my layout and I perhaps adjusted this breakpoint to maybe be a little bit wider, let's say 450. And now I preview this in the browser. 
It should be above that lower limit that the browser has. So let's scale down. There's our first breakpoint right there. And there's our second. So you can see our single column layout works as intended. So this is the guts of responsive design in Muse. Adding breakpoints and shuffling or hiding content depending on how you want it to look on each breakpoint.